Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shiva Ayadure. We're going to be starting shortly. And I think I'm live. Let me see. Okay, great. So I'm live. It's uh, Friday the 13th. So welcome to Dr. Shiva Live. Uh, many of you know I did a tweet about three days ago sharing my concerns about the coronavirus. In particular, what I shared was that the, I, I think I'm gonna have to start all over again because it looks like I'm having a network error. It's saying, can people see me? Yes, no. Can people tell me if they're seeing me all right online? Yes or no? Hello everyone, I just wanna do a check first. Hi everyone, can you see me okay? Sarah, if you're listening, I have Sarah who helps us out. Okay, good. All right, so um, what I wanna really talk about today is a follow-up to a tweet I did which went viral all over the internet. And what I shared was um, the president had essentially said that the news media was overhyping this thing. And I basically followed up with, with that and I said, look, as a MIT PhD in biological engineering, uh, a person who spent most of my scientific career really focused on health and really under trying to understand systems some of you may know I have four degrees from MIT. My PhD is in the field of biological engineering, which is a new department MIT started in 2003. Plus I have three other degrees in engineering, in electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and design. But beyond that, I've always had a deep interest in health, having grown up, uh, some of you may know, in India, in a small farm where my grandmother practiced traditional systems of medicine. To the Western world, that may seem a little bit weird, but there have been other systems of medicine long before Western medicine that were based on looking at the body as a whole system. But anyway, I was very motivated as a young kid to understand systems that led me to, um, as my parents came here in 1970, the United States, my deep interest in medicine. I was working as a full-time research fellow uh, uh, at Rutgers Medical School doing research on SIDS with computing where I, where I created the first email system. And that's a whole nother story. But the, re the reality is I've had, a, I've had a deep interest in understanding the body of the system, the body is a system, meaning how the ankle bones connected to the foot bone. So that's some background. So I tweeted out that based on my understanding as someone who literally spends probably every day studying the immune system, I have a company called Cytosol. I run an educational institute called Systems Health, but we really educate people on the body as a system, but we do a lot of research and at the molecular level, and it's what I uh, live and breathe. Many even scientific professionals who are advising the president, many even MDs and pediatricians, really don't have a deep understanding of the immune system. It's not that easy. It's a very complicated system. And in fact, the immune system that is taught in medical schools is a system of immunity that really goes back probably to 50 to 100 years. Most people in medical school training, they don't really have a full scale understanding of the modern immune system. And what I want to emphasize to you is I want to share with you as much as what I've learned. In fact, uh, less than three, four months ago, I was asked to give the invited distinguished lecture talk at the National Science Foundation at the Center for the Science of Information on the Immune System, which we're going to talk about. But mainly today, you're going to learn some science. I want to really focus on the real truth about the coronavirus, as I've shared. We want to talk about what you can do to help your own immunity. And really, we need to have a discussion. I hope the president, if he's there, is listening to this because I wanna, uh, first of all, express that everything he has done has been the right thing, in, you know, in terms of the basics of closing the borders, you know, and even though he was criticized, I wanna share that uh, in spite of all the heat that he's getting, he's done more than what Barack Obama did and was, you know, praised for, for things that he should have done. And at the same time, he's dealing with a situation where we're dealing with the CDC of this country, which really never really address infrastructure issues and due to their own incompetence. And also the CDC fundamentally is highly corrupt. They have a revolving door with pharma. Their entire emphasis is always on reactionary solutions, on vaccines and medical interventions, not really on promoting immune health because either they don't understand immune health because these guys are more interested in maintaining their positions, 
flying between farm on their government positions. Let's assume we give them the benefit of the doubt that they're sort of incompetent. But today, hopefully, if they're listening, I want to educate them because that's something that I enjoy doing and that's really uh, the service that I want to do. So today, we're going to talk about the immune system and uh, everyone here is going to learn it. Uh, and this is the most up-to-date information. We're not going to go into every little detail. We don't need to, but you're going to get a deep appreciation of the immune system. And then we're going to talk about what is actually going on and why this overreaction is going on and that the real infection here is the fear and uncertainty that we need to overcome as an American family uh, to get strong to move forward. And the good news is that there's a lot of optimism that you're going to hear and uh, not only hope, but very practically um, what we need to be doing. And the coronavirus um, opportunity in some ways is a real opportunity for all Americans to really start focusing on immune health. What does it mean to have a healthy and resilient immune system? And this comes down to two factors we're going to talk about. What do you put inside your body or on your body. And this is a decision that you can make. And the second thing is what are we surrounded by? The air, the water, and the food. And this is an infrastructure issue with the lawyer lobbyists, horrible politicians that you keep electing and you need to stop electing them. It's like making bad choices have put into place a set of people who do not care for your health. And right now they're running around acting as though they care for you, closing down schools, shutting down, you know, March Madness, etc., overreacting, and you're going to see that word come up, overreacting as an unhealthy immune system does because they are corrupt, incompetent, and they do not care about your health. Some of you may know I, as a scientist, an inventor, and an educator, am running for U.S. Senate because I believe that it's time that you had one of you in the Senate. It's time that you had working people in the Senate. It's time that you have people who produce, who educate, who do things because they love what they do and they love this country working for you versus these completely horrible, I hate to say it, scumbag parasites, lawyer lobbyists, 60% of the United States Senate and House of Representatives is filled with people who do deals and want to stay there for life. and. I make this promise to you, I'm going in there for one term to clean things up and to ensure that your voice is heard and we create a whole nother generation of young people who want to participate in politics for you. But let me start by explaining what the immune system is, okay? And broadly, in fact, let me start with the model of the immune system that many of these incompetent people learn including many of the people in the CDC, many of the MDs and the pediatricians, because these people have big egos, but they frankly do not understand the immune system. And that's where we need to start. So let me share, let me transition over to this, and we're gonna stare, share with this diagram. And what you see in this diagram is a current model of the immune system. In fact, this model of the immune system is what is used by these people to promote the concept of vaccines being the only way to heal your body or support the immune system, which is absolutely not true. So first of all, what you see here is we have the innate immune system here, which uh, is then uh, integrates with the adaptive immune system to create antibodies. So let me explain it simply. In the conventional model, of the immune system in the conventional model of understanding the immune system which 90 percent of 99 percent of doctors learn they typically uh, essentially learn these two box model okay they learn these two boxes and in this two box understanding a pathogen and what is a pathogen bacteria viruses allergens you know interact with your innate immune system okay so what is the innate immune system well the innate immune system is the aspect of your body at the physical level, organ level, all the way down to the cellular level that interacts with these pathogens that come from the outside, okay? So these are the things that come through your eyes. When people say don't touch your eyes, right? Through your mucosa and your nose, through your mouth, 
through your ears, through your skin, etc. Okay, and other orifices in your body. This is where these pathogens come. And when these pathogens come, they interact with what is called your innate immune system. The innate immune system is composed of, think about it as Marines, they, or the infantry, they just start going after and trying to engulf these pathogens to take them out very quickly. And they are non-specific. This includes things like neutrophils and macrophages. This is called the innate immune system. And the essence, the goal of that immune system is to knock things out quickly. And if things are working right, what happens is that occurs during the first zero to 72 hours when you are experiencing some pathogen. And thereafter, what happens is the adaptive immune system kicks in. By the way, this is the old 50 to 600 year old model of the immune system. And the adaptive immune system are sharpshooters. Those sharpshooters are include T cells and B cells, and those T cells and B cells attempt to take out that particular pathogen by creating a particular antibody. Now, in a healthy individual, the innate kicks in. You don't even notice this. Maybe you get a little sniffle. You get, you know, don't feel that well. And the adaptive kicks in, and you create these antibodies. And next time you're exposed to that particular pathogen, you don't even notice it. Nothing really happens. Okay. So, but the key point that I want to share with you here is. This is the understanding of the innate and the adaptive immune system that is still used to promote the vaccination model. In this model of the immune system, the theory is that if you get those antibodies, you're fine, you can move on, and you're done. Okay? So I hope that's clear. Now, what I want to now share with you is the research that I've been doing, and in fact, the work of many individuals over the last probably 50 years and there's an emerging field which, um, it, with all humility, I'm considered one of the leaders in, in the field of systems biology, precision, and personalized medicine. And what that, that field came out in 2003, and the notion there was that each one of us is individual, and what one size does not fit all, and we need to figure out what the right medicine is for the right person at the right time. By the way, that's what my poor grandmother, who was a village healer who helped a lot of people, did in traditional systems of medicine. Not everyone got, even though they may have had the same disease, not everyone got the same medicine. Uh, everyone, it was tuned. So in the modern theory of the immune system, what emerges in the modern theory is very different than what I just shared with you. There are a lot more boxes to keep it simple. And what you see here is that you have the innate and we have the adaptive. However, there is something else between the innate and the adaptive. It's called the interferon system. The interferon system um, was a foundational set of work that I did for my PhD thesis. If you want to go search it, uh, you can look it up on the MIT. If someone wants it, I'll send it to you. But my PhD thesis was building a new technology to really use the computer to model complex molecular reactions, phenomenon such as inflammation and whole diseases. That was a breakthrough that my PhD did it. And that resulted in a company I run today called Cyto, which means cell and solve. And one of the deep interests I have is mod eliminating the need for animal testing, modeling these complex diseases, and finding out how combinations of things cause good things to occur and also cause bad things to occur. So synergistic effects of good things can, alleviate, can support our health or synergistic effects of lots of little toxins over time can hurt our health. But Getting back, so that's Cytosol, but uh, in my work in Cytosol, we have built what we call an architecture and we take all of that knowledge that's coming out and we've built a much more a comprehensive architecture of the immune system. So what you have is you have the innate immune system communicating to the adaptive immune system and that interacts with what's called the interferon system. Now the interferon system is really the missing link. A lot of the MDs and PhDs and uh, you know the pediatricians don't even know this, but the interferon system is a whole nother system that upregulates all sorts of genes to interfere with viruses. This means our body is expecting pathogens and it trains itself to get stronger. But these three systems are not alone. There's a fourth system called the microbiome. Uh, I should really probably, you know, I'm gonna edit this uh, uh, you know, this system also includes what's called the virome, okay? The virome in this also includes the many, many, uh, nearly 300, 300 
plus trillion viruses in your body, the microbiome is a bacteria, almost about 60 trillion uh, bacteria in your body. We have about six trillion cells. So if you think about it, we are all not just the six trillion cells we have, which make up us, but we're also about 10 times that, about 60 trillion bacteria. And then frankly, 60 times that, around 360 trillion viruses. All right, that's called the virome. So the reason I'm telling you is we already have hundreds of trillions of viruses in our body, tens of trillions of bacteria. And all of these things are actually supporting life within us and every, uh, among other people. When I shake your hand, I'm probably passing on to you um, uh, uh, hundreds of thousands or billions of viruses, okay? And this gets to one of the essential points that I recently just tweeted out the beginning of this day, do, uh, the, the, uh, a, mis, uh, a, a mistaken idea that the mainstream media, what I call the BSMSM 2020 bullshit media, mainstream media promotes, and this is where the hype comes from, as though it's the viruses that kill and harm us. So you're gonna learn some factual science here. None of this is controversial. It's mere fact. It's not the viruses that kill and harm us. And we'll come back to that. But going back to this diagram, what you see here is the microbiome and the virome interact through the gut-brain axis to our neural system. So it's it, essentially, it's a much more complex system than this concept that was used to promote the 1962 vaccination program that Kennedy signed into law and the mandates that many of these uh, politicians are trying to remove to support big pharma. The reality is that the real understanding of the immune system is much more complex, which means when we are getting medical interventions, vaccines or pharmaceutical drugs, it is affecting multiple subsystems and it is not as simple as people think. So multiple things are involved. If you get a virus or a pathogen, the innate immune system kicks in, the interferon system, the adaptive, our microbiome, our, vir uh, 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 our virome, and all of these things are beautifully organized in a choreography. More importantly, the gut bacteria interacts through the gut-brain axis to our brain. So think about that. The gut and the brain are related. My gut and my brain are related, and this is important to understand. Because what this means is what you eat, the exogenous stuff that are in the environment, toxins, good things affect our gut bacteria. And based on that balance, you have good mental health. Neuroinflammation can be caused by gut imbalances. So you are what you eat, you, are, you, you, think, uh, you start thinking about, your thoughts are a function of what you eat. This is very, very important to understand that this is not some hocus pocus, this is what modern science is revealing, okay? Now having said that, let's talk a little bit about um, uh, now, you know, the key points of what I wanna get to, okay? First of all, viruses do not harm or kill us. Let me repeat that three times. Viruses do not harm or kill us. Viruses do not harm or kill us, okay? In Wuhan, 11 million people were there. You know, this virus is everywhere. In America, it's a couple of thousand people. Let's say you're saying the Chinese people, are, the Chinese government's lying. I can guarantee you it's not 11 million people have died, a very small percentage. In America, based on the statistics today, about 40 people over the age of 40 have died, okay? So why is it that not everyone in Wuhan, not everyone is falling dead? What is really going on, okay? We will talk about what's going on in Italy. We will talk about the reality of the public health infrastructure incapable of handling the fact that we have a whole assortment of people in this world today who have underlying pre-existing conditions. To put it simply, they're unhealthy people. Their immune systems have been weakened and compromised by poor choices, lifestyle choices as aging occurs and they're immunocompromised and by the fact that we have poisonous air, poisonous water and poisonous food, horrible and decaying infrastructure in America. America got a D plus in infrastructure. Massachusetts where MIT is got an F minus minus in infrastructure. 
crumbling roads, crum crum crumbling bridges, 20 plus year old water systems. And the politicians are not able to address this. They don't call an emergency about that, but they're quick to call an emergency about this for political reasons and to act, to fake that they care about public health. They don't give a damn about public health and you're gonna realize from a scientific standpoint quite quickly. So let's go back to this. Viruses do not harm or kill us. It is the overreaction of a weakened and dysfunctional immune system to the virus that results in our own body attacking its own cells, tissues and organs, resulting in harm and death, okay? So think about that. It is not the virus that is killing even these 40 people, etc. It is the overreaction of the immune system. It is the overreaction of the immune system because in the natural state, when your body has a proper nourishment, the proper conditions where we're not being hit with all sorts of poisonous chemicals which affect our digestive system, affect our microbiome, we're not being hit with poisonous air or poisonous water, and we make the right choices to eat you know, high quality vegetables, our thyroid is working right, we have proper hydrochloric acid, you know what, your body's an amazing being. It knows how to take care of itself. And that's how we get immune health. But these politicians, the CDC and the NIH, they're not talking about any of this. Shame on them, it's criminal. So let's talk a little more, more about this so we can get back to basic science here. Now, these dysfunctional immune response is a result of underlying pre-existing conditions. Okay, what are we talking about? Well, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, smoking, people being immunocompromised, eating tons and tons of sugar, sugar in the diet when we should not be doing that. Okay, and we'll talk about that. So we're, we're talking really be, uh, here is the body in its natural state has all these components. They work together to give you a strong immune system. Now that means you must take some personal responsibility for what you put in and around your body and you must also make the right choice for your future of who you're electing into government. This is a political question. What Are you electing lawyer lobbyists who know nothing about health? Are you electing the same old GOP establishment people, the Democratic people, are all in collusion, by the way. They don't give a damn about you. These people also were so afraid when Donald Trump ran. Forget whether you like him or not. Let's be clear. He upset their apple cart and he disrupted them. That's why I voted for him. I never voted for any politician, but he was exposing their corruption. And, and the ex expose of their corruption is what bothers them. The expose of their corruption is why that ugly individual, Bill Maher, a quote unquote comedian, said that it is time we crash the economy and bring this to a recession to get rid of Donald Trump. I'm not gonna fully go there, but I wanna make you aware that we have a lot of evil unfortunately disgusting people who think they know better than you and me and they actually want to destroy this economy and they've said it openly this is not conspiracy and they do not care about the working people of this country who work with their hands and their minds who innovate and create what they care about is themselves and their power profit and control they do not care about your health so this is what we have we have viruses do not harm or kill us it is the overreaction of the weakened and dysfunctional immune system to the virus that results in your own body attacking itself. And we're going to go through this. And such a dysfunctional immune system is a result of underlying pre-existing conditions, which here are some of them. Now, these are brought on by a variety of things. So now we're going to go a little bit deeper. And again, I, I want to take this slow because... The politicians are not going to teach you this because they're basically incompetent. They don't know stuff. And in fact, your academics and your medical professionals don't want to teach you this because either they didn't learn it or they want to get just get you on hype and reaction on drugs and vaccines. That's the only thing that they know because that's how they make money. They don't give a damn. I keep repeating about real immune health. So let's go here and start talking about what we need to do to build this up. So what happens when you age? Why is it in this situation that the people who are dying are people 50 plus and older? Um, well, first of all, as you age, 
your thyroid level goes down, okay? As you age, your thyroid level goes down. And now I'm gonna talk about something interesting, vitamin A production. So your vitamin A production goes down because when your thyroid is not functioning right, your body is not able to take carotenoids that you eat and convert them into vitamin A. And we're gonna learn very soon, as my friend uh, Dr. Robbie Mitchell says, vitamin A is like a deadbolt which protects your cell walls, okay? It's like building a wall so other invaders don't come in, okay? It's, so vitamin A is critical to this. But as you age, your thyroid level goes down and, and you, you minimize uh, a vitamin A production. Now, why is that important? Because vitamin A, uh, when that goes down, you get less cytokeratins. And I'm gonna show you a very nice one image on this, the cytokeratins are the things that create the wall around your cells to really protect you. That's, so these two bullets you need to take away. The second thing we need to understand is that as you age, your hydrochloric acid goes down, HCL, acid level goes down. What does that mean? You lower your gut acidophilus. Remember, phil, phyllis, you know, is likes, from the Greek and Latin, I think it's Latin, uh, I may be making an error there, but it's a thing that likes acid. So your gut bacteria, which like acid, when the acid levels go down, what happens at this point is that your microbiome is goes into dysfunction. So as you age, thyroid level goes down, you produce less vitamin A if you don't address it properly, and your acid levels goes down. When acid level goes down, your microbiome gets affected. So again, if you think about your throat and your gut, these two things as you age are getting affected and you go into what's called you become immunocompromised, okay? Your immune system gets weakened and it doesn't act the way it should in that all those systems coming together in the in, in the proper way, your innate immune system, your IFN and your adaptive etc balancing itself. So this is why as you age, it's very important you focus on diet and we'll come back to this. The other thing a number of people have been rightfully asking is if you eat a high sugar diet and which by the way, just as an aside, what I want to share with you is one of the initiatives that I've done to help uh, the public is I created a uh, uh, a whole new certification, and you can see it at Whole Foods and Walmart, it's called Clean Food Certified. It's a thing that I did through my research institute to help the industry to really identify what is good clean food, it involves foods that are non-GMO, organic, high bioavailability, it's a very complex systems approach. I did it as a labor of love to help the industry. Um, and I was speaking to a potential partner who wanted to get her jam certified. She's a woman who produces amazing organic jams down in Texas. And she told me, Shiva, did you know that the FDA will not allow, and listen to this carefully, something to be branded as a jam or a jelly unless it has 40% sugar, okay? So the, so the sugar industry has manipulated the, the, the branding of jams and jellies, which is your kids eat when they put it on there, uh, that it has to have a high amount of sugar, otherwise you can't sell it, okay? And I don't hear the Center for Disease Control talking about this. I don't hear Anthony Fauci talking about this, the head of the NIH, but I hear a woman who's an entrepreneur who cares about producing great products in Texas who educated an MIT PhD about this. It is us who are going to solve health. It is not the government because they don't give a damn about your health. They profit from ill health. They profit from sickness. So the bottom line is we are filled in a world where it's really easy to get a lot of sugar. So wh what happens when you have a high sugar diet? Well, when you have a high sugar diet, candida grows. Okay, it's a whole nother set of organisms that start growing. And when candida growth occurs, gliotoxins increase. And these toxins destroy your macrophages and T cells. So let me, let me explain that. What this happens is you take in sugar, which is what it seems like the government wants you to eat a lot of sugar. And when you eat a lot of sugar, which is like a drug, you, your body will create these, to will create, candida will start growing and your body will make gliotoxins. By the way, this is not anything controversial. This is not woo-woo stuff. 
There's thousands of papers written on this. We can go down to the molecular mechanisms. Anyone who wants to challenge this, please call me up. My number is 617-631-6874 and we can have a discussion. We'll do a live on it, okay? So those gliotoxins increase and what happens when that happens? Well, look what happens. You know, as my notes here share, you start destroying your macrophages and your T cells. Well, why are they important? Well, you know what? They're right over here. They're in your innate immune system and they're in your adaptive immune system, okay? So you're basically destroying the soldiers and the sharpshooters in your own immune system. You're destroying your Marines and you're destroying your sharpshooters. That's what, the, that's what sugar does. That's what these gliotoxins do, okay? And that destruction of your immune system the, the destruction of, I'm sorry, the, the destruction, the, the gliotoxin increase, it destroys your, your macrophages and T cells. And what does that do? Your innate and your adaptive immune systems are adversely affected. You've basically screwed up your immune system. Okay? Thank you, you know, all of you companies who work with your lobbyists, with your lawyer freaking lobbyists to poison our children, to poison that much sugar and the CDC and the NIH and the researchers at MIT and Harvard, they don't say a lot about any of this, but they are out there on NPR talking about, yeah, 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 coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus. And by the way, 90% of them hate Trump, okay? Also, 6% of scientists are Republicans, 60% are Democrats who think they know it all, and a lot of them are down the street here between MIT and Harvard. That's another aside for you, okay? So what do we have going on here? Let's go back here. So we fundamentally have the following taking place, okay? Now in a normal healthy individual, the innate immune system will take care of that pathogen, okay? You, you were, remember, 380 trillion viruses in our body. Right, by the way, here's some numbers here. Six trillion human cells, 60 trillion bacteria, 380 trillion viruses, small number of fungi. This is all within you right now, okay? So now in a normal healthy individual, the innate system will take care of the pathogen. Now, in the non-healthy individual, be it an adult or a child, the innate immune system is not able to take care of the pathogens, okay? Because of the destruction through either sugar or the thyroid is not working right or you're not getting adequate amounts of, uh, adequate amounts of, you didn't get ad adequate amounts of HCL. So let me just review very simply. In the non-healthy individual, what's happening is that could occur two ways. And it's a whole area here. You're under dirty air, dirty water, dirty food. You compromise your immune system, your thyroid, and your uh, HCL levels are low, whether you're a child or an aging person. And when that happens, your body essentially is not producing the proper vitamin A, your gut bacteria is off, and now you've compromised your immune system. Now add to that, a lot of sugar diet, what you're furthermore doing to your body in a very unfortunate way is that your body's macrophages and your T cells, the innate and the adaptive are being destroyed. And now what happens? What happens? Remember, it's not the virus. It's not the, uh, it's not the virus that kills or harms you. What actually kills and harms you is what is called the cytokine storm. Okay. Cytokine storm. What do I mean by that? Well, Let's go back here. If you remember this diagram, innate, adaptive, well, among all of these are what are called cytokines. There's a whole nother set of chemicals that because your innate and your adaptive systems are harmed, they say, wow, I got to help Bob out. You know, I got to help Bill out. What, what should I do? Because your body is trying to heal itself. And so what it does then, it unleashes a set of cytokines, okay? These are chemicals they are always at a certain level there but they get overreact. This is the overreaction caused by those underlying conditions by, uh, the, uh, by people whose systems have been weakened by the different areas that I just, I, I just gave you a glimpse of. So when the, when the immune system is compromised, you have a cytokine storm. All these other chemicals start raging to try to make up for the fact that the other subsystems have failed. I hope that's clear. Very simple stuff. Your body tries to be in balance. Your body is, is, is tries to protect you. So it unleashes these, these cytokines. It basically starts firing off missiles everywhere to saying, oh my God, I got to protect Bob, okay? And as a part of that, 
what happens is this cytokine storm, these chemicals, go and start attacking your own tissues. So by way of example, in Ebola, the cytokines start because, by the way, just to give you a visual understanding, the viruses, if you think about a virus, it has a layer on it. Outside of it is called glycoproteins. Inside of that is the RNA, which is the nucleic acids, which go into your cell and take over your cell machinery. But when that happens, the pieces of the outside, the glycoproteins, you know, they're like the shedding hair. They go settle all different places. Now, in the case of Ebola, these essentially go into the arterial endothelial, which is in your arteries, in your heart cells, in your endothelium. This is why you start bleeding outside, which you start basically, you know, bleeding from inside. And that occurs because your own cytokines go over to that arterial endothelial cells and they start killing it. Now in Corona, it is your, it's a cytokine storm that, ad, that attacks the epithelium, which is a different set of cells in your lungs. So let me summarize that again. Your body is compromised. 50 plus year old people are not work. Their, their systems are compromised. The body starts attacking. In the case of coronavirus, the glycoproteins go embed in the cells, uh, the epithelial cells, and your own body cytokine, because it's compromised, starts attacking the cell walls and you start having respiratory failure, okay? This is what happens. So the bottom line here is let's make it very clear again, it's not the viruses that harm you, okay? We have trillions of viruses within us. We don't see 40 people have died. It's not like every American is dying but it is a compromising of the immune system that causes a cytokine storm. How does that compromising occur? Dirty water, dirty air, dirty food, horrible infrastructure brought to you by the lawyer lobbyist scumbags of this country who you should stop electing. Start there. Number two, you need to start making good choices. Massive sugar diets where you're gonna screw up your, your, your entire immune system, you're gonna create candida, et cetera, and the other things you need to start uh, having adequate nutrition. So I'm gonna focus today in the interest of time on one of them, which I've alluded to, which is uh, vitamin A, okay? So again, just to summarize, when we look at this, you know, when you look at the cause of uh, underlying uh, uh, pre-existing conditions, lifestyle, poor dietary choices, lack of exercise, stress, lack of sleep, smoking, and I've said, the environment, dirty air, dirty water, dirty food, brought to you by your lawyer lobbyist scumbags. And I think that's what we should call them, lawyer LLS, okay? That's who they are, the LLSs, that's what they deliver to you, and we keep electing them. It's time to stop electing them. It's time you get people who actually care about your health. So let's go here now. So I'm gonna now talk to you, it's gonna get not too technical, but I wanna give you enough information because my job is to arm you with knowledge because, you know, as someone, uh, an enlightened being once said, it is ignorance that is a cause of suffering. So let's start teaching a little bit of knowledge here about vitamin A. Now, the epithelial, okay, and, mucos, uh, and mu mucus tissue uh, in integrity. Now, in your lungs, the epithelial cells and the mucus tissue function as a front line of defense against pathogen inv invasion. So when things are coming into you, you know, you, you happen to be around someone and they sneeze. Let's say they got the corona and they sneeze all over you. I was at Whole Foods and I was going to pick up some supplements. In fact, someone sneezed at me, okay? So, so what happens is these pathogens, a frontline defense is your epithelial mucosa tissue. Now, vitamin A, bullet number two, plays a cr crucial low in the morphological formation of the epithelium epithelial keratinization, stratification, differentiation, and functional maturation of the epithelial cells. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, in English, what that means is that vitamin A is literally used to create the wall, you know? President Trump is building the wall on the border. Well, vitamin A, think about it as the thing that uh, produces cytokeratins, which are the building blocks of protecting your cell walls and they, they're the ones that provide the border, and in the epithelial cells of your lungs, they're the ones who create the proper infrastructure so your body doesn't get attacked by these pathogens, okay? So that's like the first defense system. 
the other piece you want to understand is as a promoter of this uh, process, you know, vitamin A is an integral part of the mucus layer of both the respiratory tract and your intestines. If you look at your gut and your respiratory tract, vitamin A is an integral part of that muco mucus layer. And vitamin A pr uh, promotes the muc mucus secretion. It improves antigen uh, 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 non-specific immunity of your innate ad adaptive system. So vitamin A is, by the way, it's a hormone, okay? It's not just a vitamin. It has an amazing effect on really supporting your entire immune system. And this is something uh, that you need to take away from this. Now, I'm gonna show you a very, very stellar picture my friend Robbie uh, uh, just sent to me. But what you see here is you see the epithelial uh, cells here. These are the cells. And you see this beautiful uh, red stuff. This is the really the keratinization that takes place, or the the cytokine wall. The, the what vitamin A does to protect your cells. Okay. Now vitamin A deficiency leads to scarring of these epithelial cells, and the scarred and dysfunctional epithelial cells are unable to exert, you know, a barrier function to really support your innate immune system. What that means is if you don't have enough vitamin A, you don't get these beautiful walls and your cells actually start scarring so they're not really able to protect themselves from these viruses. And the other key things I wanna share with you are that vitamin A promotes a proliferation to regulate apoptosis. This is proper cell death of cells that you don't wanna have and vitamin A deficiency leads to defect in the T cells. Those T cells are the ones in the adaptive immune system. And vitamin A is essential for proper development and differentiation of those macrophages. You know, it's the type of the innate cells. And vitamin A plays a regulatory role in the differentiation stage of the natural killer T cells and the down-regulating the expression of these IFN gamma and IL-5. What do I mean by that? The simple point is, to state it in a, in a simple way, um, I wanna give the technical people technical stuff, but vitamin A is gonna protect your cell walls, but more importantly, it's also gonna make sure that your immune system is properly modulated and it down-regulates those cytokines that will cause a cytokine storm, okay? That goes and attacks you. So this is why vitamin A is critical. This is why you want your thyroid working properly and all of those things are poss possible and you can easily do this on your own. Start eating good foods, start eating the vegetables, start making sure your thyroid's working properly. And it's sort of insane that the doctors don't first recommend, first line of defense is why not test your vitamin A levels? First line, if they really wanna protect your immune health, are they testing your vitamin A levels? That's what they should be asking. Meanwhile, they're spending billions and billions of dollars to, to support a bio, bunch of biotech companies here, who are, by the way, friends of the CDC, they go in and out to use this scare to make probably a bunch of people billion, billionaires out of using you and I and shutting and affecting the US economy. That's what these guys are actually doing. So, and in closing, what I wanna share with you is, there's a couple of important things here. You know, vitamin A can really regulate the entire adaptive and immune system response. And what I wanna end with is there's a very good article on that came out here, really talking about vitamins A effect on childhood and infectious diseases. I mean, this is a summary article. It's a little bit hard to read, but what you see here is measles, it reduced mortality in a meta-analysis. You know, reduced more, again, measles. You see many, many ways that vitamin A reduces mortality. Acute pneumonia reduces, you know, infantile diarrhea enteric infection, malaria, you go down the list. I don't see, have you heard the CDC talking about vitamin A? How, are they advising the president about this? Are they? No, they are saying we have a vaccine, we're working with pharma companies. Well, what are these pharma guys doing? They are creating substances and pharmaceutical drugs which are going to try to interfere with the viral replication process to try to stop the virus. Now, do they have a brain? Don't they think that those things that they create may have other side effects elsewhere? Probably not, because what they want to do is use this hype to essentially get more power, profit, and control. That's what they're up to. 
And that's why I tweeted out as an MIT PhD in biological engineering, what is going on is that the deep state is using this to attack our economy, you know, in, you know, suppress dissent. They don't want us asking questions and they want to support mandated medicines, be it vaccines, interventions, etc. Vitamin A, amazing nutrient. Look, as the sun comes out, which is going to happen shortly, you're going to get another amazing nutrient called vitamin D, okay? Vitamin D produces chemicals which are antiviral. They're things that go and protect our body. That's why the sun is an amazing healer, okay? That's why in most cultures, they paid homage to the sun gods because it is a healer. So vitamin A, vitamin D, and you know, take your vitamin C. And we can add more, but what I want to end with sharing with you is that it is time that we as Americans came together to see who our real enemy is. There are some viruses that we have in this country and in the world. It's BS MSM 2020. That's my new term for this virus. <laughs> Bullshit mainstream media 2020 and then BS SCI, Bullshit Science 2020. We have academics in this country and I'm glad that the Attorney General's office went after that professor at Harvard and threw him in, arrested him. We need to start arresting at least two thirds of the academics in this country who are pilfering money from our tax dollars, from you and I, by doing bogus research and doing research based on political leanings. CO2 is not a pollutant, guys. MIT got $40 million for saying this. If we wanna solve climate change, let's start reducing pollution. The Paris Accords allow China to go from 11 billion metric tons of pollution to 22 billion metric tons of pollution. President Trump did the right thing pulling out of it. And any idiot who says we should go back into it, do not vote for them. CO2 is not a pollutant because when it goes below about 180, all life on earth dies. If we want to help our health, let us talk about lowering pollution. Let's go after companies like Monsanto and shut them down once and for all. Let's talk about our water. Why is it we all have to get water filters and spend all this money on bottled water? What is going on? I already pay enough money for you know, water. I pay property taxes. Why am I not getting clean water out of my faucets? Come on, this is what we should be asking. And fundamentally, we need to recognize that the lawyer lobbyists in this country do not deserve your vote at all. The founders of this country were people who created stuff. Those of you listening to me, your nurses, your workers, you work for a living, you, your plumbers and your electricians, and you, you know, you're not people who manipulate the world, enough of them. So in 2020 in Massachusetts, the reason I'm running for Senate is not to be in the Senate for the rest of my life. One term, and it's because I believe you need people like you, people like me who came, worked as a working class kid in New Jersey with nothing, busted my buns to get more four degrees at MIT, have paid millions in tax dollars. I'm not a Kennedy who got a $51 million trust fund, nor do I want to be someone like, and listen carefully, because it's time we call out the people who claim they want to help us on the left and the right, okay? On the left and the right, there are a lot of charlatans here who are building their lives, building nonprofits and claiming they want to solve cancer, claiming they want to stop vaccines, okay? And they do not want to do that. What they want to do is they want to profit from you. They want to profit from, in fact, illness or like poverty pimps. And what we need in this country is people recognizing that it's the working people who need to be in governance, not the people who manipulate the world. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. So what is the time for truth with the coronavirus? Well, the time for truth is this. You need to recognize it's not the coronavirus. That's a real issue. It's a fact that our bodies are being compromised. 54% of kids have autoimmune disorders in this country. Obesity rates are going to 20 to 30%. Okay, one out of five kids has some mental issue going on. And these issues are not being talked about. So if we want to talk, have an emergency, I want to ask Charlie Baker, who claims he's a Republican, or Elizabeth Warren, who was a senator here, or the Kennedys, okay, who live off their name all day long. I want to ask them, what have you done to make sure that we have clean water, clean air, clean food? And what I mean by that is not running a nonprofit to say you're doing it, but actually doing it. And you'll find out they've done nothing. 
What they've done is Massachusetts, by way of example, where MIT and Harvard is supposedly the greatest elites of the world, got an F minus minus. So all of you professors at Harvard and MIT, whatever the hell you think you are, you, we're going to knock you down a couple of notches because this state got an F minus minus, 123 points out of 350 points. Crumbling infrastructure, subways that don't work, water systems that don't work, in a place where they're supposedly the number one scientists and technologists. Shame on you guys. It's disgusting. And Massachusetts got a D plus plus in corruption. The most corrupt, top 10 corrupt state, Massachusetts, and the third most, third most crumbling infrastructure. And yet these people are thinking that we should elect them, yet they tell us what to do. I say to hell with them. And it's time that we as American people took back our country and recognize it is fear and insecurity that they use and we need to build our immunity against their fear and insecurity. And that is what this corona coronavirus opportunity is about. It's a time for all of us to get what we deserve. And if that means a revolution, guys, against these people, well, damn it, that's what we should do because it's enough is enough. Anyway, this is Dr. Shiva Ayadure. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm running for U.S. Senate. You will have at least one voice among 100 senators who will fight for you and always tell you the truth, and you deserve that. Go up, support us in whatever way you want. And by the way, you know, anyone who gives me money, I was brought up always to give something back. You know, when you give us money on our website, if you want to do that, you don't have to. This is not a sales pitch but I will give you a book called System and Revolution that'll really teach you how your body is a system. I give you a tool that came out of my Fulbright and my MIT work to teach you how you can figure out how your body is a system and you also get a bumper sticker, okay? But you don't have to give me money. What I want you to give me is the opportunity for you to realize that you deserve something better and that is you deserve the right to use your own common sense and to choose leaders and to decide what you put into yourselves that brings real health to you and your family. Anyway, God bless you all and I wish you well and uh, thank you for this opportunity to serve you. Be well.